Welcome to the lesson of the week. This is a chromatic scale in triplets with a kind of a superimposed pattern onto it. So let me just play through the exercise and then we'll talk about why it's good for the left and right hands and synchronization and all those other great things. And uh, you can find this exercise in almost every technique book, by the way. Um, I'm using um, the Bible of classical guitar technique, and I have a link to that in the YouTube info section, but it's also in Pumping Nylon, it's in pretty much every single technique book. It's like, it's a chromatic scale, right? And it's just a superimposed pattern, so it's going to appear in all books. So if you're a beginner student, you should probably just start with a basic chromatic scale, right? And, uh, and all the way up. Um, once you feel comfortable with that one finger per fret stance and you can get all the notes to be legato and ring out clearly and everything like that, then you can start superimposing patterns onto it to um, increase the difficulty of the synchronization between the two hands. But let's talk about first about why it's great for the left hand. For the left hand, I mean chromatic scales are great for the left hand in general. They're just good because you're always um, using all of your fingers, all four of your fingers on lots of different frets on the guitar. It's just a really good solid exercise for students to do. But this one has a lot of on and off. Like when you go E, F, sorry, E, Um, as you go up through those patterns, there's just so much on and off with this hand. The fingers are just activated so much that it just really increases the workout in the left hand. So it's just really great for your dexterity and your physical kind of technique workout. And also just, again, it's engaging all the fingers and all the frets. Um, it's also really great for the right hand because in the right hand, what you have is some awkward string crossings. If you start with the I finger and just alternate I, M, I, M, I, M the whole time, some of the string crossings will be easy and some will be more difficult. That's an easy one. That's an awkward one. So an awkward string crossing is when, um, like for example, if you're using I, M, when the I reaches over to a higher string. And you have to play like M, I, M across two strings like that. It's much more comfortable to do I, M, I rather than M, I, M. But awkward string crossings are a reality of guitar playing and you have to get used to them. So uh, practicing them on a regular basis is a really good idea. Now sometimes in repertoire we throw in the A finger to avoid an awkward string crossing. But like you can't throw in a finger every single time there's a string crossing. Um, there's just too many of them in guitar playing. So becoming proficient at that is really, really important. And it's a little bit tricky, especially with rest stroke. It's a lot easier with free stroke. Um, you can just reach over. But with rest stroke, it's a little bit trickier, especially on the bass strings. It's just a little bit awkward. But again, just you want to get used to that. Now, so it's good for the left hand, it's also good for the right hand, but it, it's just great for the synchronization of the two hands, right? All this up and down work in the left hand has to synchronize with the movements in the right hand because this, this hand is controlling the rhythm. So all this synchronization of doing the two movements at the same time is really great for your, just your general um, technique of guitar playing, what your brain has to do when you play guitar. It's just really good for that. Um, and then if you're an intermediate player, um, you might want to also spice it up with M-A in there as well. So that would be going M-A the whole time. M-A, M-A, M-A. Won't play through the whole thing, but 
You could also do three finger combos and, and even include the thumb in there as well, which would be a little bit trickier, but they're all really great exercises. So I hope you try out your chromatic scales. Like I said, if you're a beginner, you might just wanna really focus on just chromatic scales at first till you feel really comfortable with that and then transition into these, um, these challenges like add, playing um, scales and triplets. You, might, you actually might want to first just practice playing chromatic scales in triplets. When you play things in triplets, the accent in the right hand gets alternated, right? I am I am I am I am I am I am. You know, it, it the accent transfers from one finger to the other, so it's a really um, it's a really good like exercise for right hand sensitivity and like accentuation, right? So there's just so many good things to say about a simple exercise like this. And um, there's lots of great books out there that approach that. this. Um, this one really approaches it quite nicely and in, in segments. Um, other books like Pumping Nylon just throw it at you and you can just dive right in. Uh, this one's much more progressive though, so it eases, um, you into this, it eases you into the scale patterns and then um, they increase in difficulty, which is, which is a nice thing as well. Anything that's progressive I, I think is really great. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll do more next week. Thanks.